there is a material out there made from wood that through some simple chemical and physical processes can be transformed into something that is lighter and stronger than steel and can even stop bullets. This material has a possibility of revolutionizing not only the building and construction industry, but many other industries as well. And there is a company that right now is beginning to produce this product commercially here in the US. This amazing product is called Superwood. Now, I first did a video on Superwood about a month ago and received thousands of comments and tons of questions. Things like, how does it stand up to termites? Uh, how could you cut it or fasten it or work with it if it's so hard? Is it susceptible to water damage? And what about the cost? Well, since that video went up, I've had a conversation with the company's CEO, Alex Lau, and I have answers to all of your questions, so stick around. So like I said, I had a ton of comments in my first video with some really good questions, as well as a few jokes about Superwood. That's what she said. <laughs> But in case you didn't see that video, let me give you a quick overview on how Superwood is made and what makes it so incredible. So Superwood is just regular wood, but it's wood that's gone through a chemical process as well as a physical process to densify and harden it. Wood is basically made up of a few different substances. The first is called cellulose and makes up about 40 to 50% of wood. Cellulose is essentially the fibers of wood and it's made up of glucose, which is a sugar, and at a molecular level is made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Cellulose gives trees their structure and provides rigidity and strength. Next, there's a material called hemicellulose, which makes up about 20 to 30% of wood. It's similar to cellulose, but it is made up of other sugars and not just glucose. Then there's a material called lignin. Lignin is really important because it acts as a binder or a glue. It binds all the wood fibers together and also gives wood rigidity and resistance to decay. The rest is made up of things like resins, oils, tannins, trace minerals, and other organic compounds. And I should say that the percentages here can vary based upon a lot of factors, including tree species and growing conditions, among other things. So why is that all important? Well, the way that superwood is made is by taking a piece of wood, like this one, and first boiling it in a chemical solution of sodium hydroxide and sodium sulfide. This partially removes the lignin and hemicellulose, but it largely leaves the wood's cellulose intact. From there, they take the treated wood and compress it until its cell walls collapse. The compression continues while the wood is gently heated and the heat together with the pressure forms chemical bonds between the atoms in the wood and adjacent nanofibers of cellulose. That process greatly strengthens the wood and it turns it into something that is lighter than steel and twice as strong. In fact, there's a popular YouTuber named Niall Red who used the scientific paper published by the original researchers of this process to create bulletproof wood. Wait. Yo, it stopped it. It actually stopped it. Well, these same researchers are behind the company called Inventwood, which has raised $50 million in capital and would begin manufacturing Superwood for sale in the US this summer. Now, I was able to speak with Superwood CEO, Alex Lau, and we talked for about an hour, and he answered a lot of the questions that you had from the first video. Things like, how does Superwood hold up to insect damage? What about uh, water damage? What kinds of things can Superwood be used for? And how much does it all cost? Now, we are going to answer all of those questions, but before we get into those details, I want to talk to you about this video's sponsor, Tecovis. Tecovis is a company that makes amazing boots, both work boots and Western boots. And I've got a pair of each, and I think they're both fantastic. And recently, I got these cowboy boots for my wife. She loves them, and they look great. The great thing about these boots is that they're comfortable right out of the box. You can tell that they're very well made. The leather quality is fantastic, and they have a ton of different styles to choose from. The work boots are also great because of features like the composite safety toe for protection. They're also waterproof and have other safety features like being oil and slip resistant. Tacova's boots are handmade and use premium leather, and I'm sure that these are going to last for years. So if you're on the market for a new pair of boots, check out Tacova's. You can click on the link in my description or scan the QR code on the screen to get your new favorite pair of boots today. And like I say, they make both fantastic work boots and great Western boots, and so there's a lot to choose from.
Tecovis has been a really great partner for the channel and I really love working with them and I love their boots. So again, check out the link in my description or the QR code on screen. And thanks again to Tecovis for sponsoring this video. All right, so as I mentioned, I had a conversation with Inventwood's CEO, Alex Lau, and I asked him all of the questions that people had asked me in the first video. Now, I would have loved to rec have recorded the conversation, but he asked me not to because he feels the need to be very careful with his public communications now that the company is getting off the ground. And I understand and respect that. I did, however, take very good notes. And so in the rest of this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about what he said and the answers to those questions. Now, the question that I got more than anything else was about termites or wood destroying insects generally. Now, there are a few different types of wood destroying insects. There are uh, insects like carpenter bees who drill into wood as a nest and not for food. And then there are other insects like termites or powder post beetles that also use the wood as a food source. And what these insects are really eating is the cellulose, those, those sugars that are found in that wood. So the last thing that you want is to install a super wood beam supporting your whole house and then have it eaten by termites. So is super wood susceptible to these wood destroying insects? Well, Alex mentioned that they have actually done testing with the US Forest Service lab where they took super wood and they placed it next to regular wood and then released termites and other insects to see what would happen. Well, in that case, the insects ignored the superwood and they only ate the regular wood. In other experiments, they put the superwood in by itself and released the insects. And they found that while some of the insects did try to eat the superwood, because the wood was so dense, the material was so dense, they were not able to get through it and they eventually died. So super termites, as it turns out, are not a thing. But what about water damage? Well, all wood is a hygroscopic material, which means that it absorbs and releases moisture from the environment. In fact, if you have wooden furniture in your house, you may have noticed that it expands slightly in the summer when it's more humid and it contracts in the winter when it's more dry. The reason is because wood is essentially made up of fibers or strands that are kind of like straws. Well, in the process of making superwood, those fibers are compressed. So they still exist, but they don't hold as much moisture as they once did because they've been densified. That said, there is still the potential for movement with the weather, but it's minimal. Other materials will also expand and contract with the environment as well. Metal will expand as it heats up and contract as it cools down. And so dealing with the expansion and contraction of materials is, is something that you have to think about with almost any kind of material. Then there is water damage. Now, Alex told me that if you were to submerge super wood in water, it would swell up like any other wood, although not as much. But they do have uh, processes to impregnate the wood with substances that will protect against water. It can even be cut and all parts of the wood that have been treated that way will have the same resistance to water. This is good because one of the products that they're planning on releasing later this year is meant for exteriors. So to answer the question on water, yes, super wood is hygroscopic like all wood, but due to how it's produced, it's less susceptible to both expansion and contraction and water damage than regular wood. And they have ways of treating it that will make it resistant to water. The next question on super wood was about how to work with it. If it's so strong, twice as strong as steel as they say, how will it be possible to cut it or to fasten it or to do anything with it really? The answer is that you can use regular woodworking tools, but you'll need to use carbide blades. Also, if you plan on using fasteners like screws, then you're gonna need to pre-drill your holes. You can nail into it, but you'll need to use high pressure nailers and strong screws or they'll just bounce off. Now, one important thing to note about the ballistics test that they did was that the super wood that stopped a bullet was a few layers thick. And so if you were nailing into one single layer, you should be able to penetrate it if you have the right tools. Alex also talked about using glues and adhesives, and that is possible as well, provided that the materials have the proper coatings that allow for it. I also saw in one of their research papers where they've done tests on joining super wood to metals and other things. But Alex said that they still have a lot of testing to be done on that front. The next question is around what kind of wood they can use. Not all wood is created equal and they all have different properties. Some woods are more dense than others. Some grow faster than others. Some are more expensive than others. Alex said that they have done tests on all kinds of wood and they've been able to make the process work with everything that they've tried, including things like 
bamboo and recycled wood. Right now they're using poplar for their process. Now poplar, I've got a piece right here, is, is a great wood to use, um, Alex said, because uh, it's a hardwood, but it's one of the softer hardwoods out there, but it's a fast growing tree and it grows in abundance near where their new plant is in Maryland. And so uh, they're gonna utilize what's in, the, what's in the area. Now on the wood that they can use, like I said, he said that they can use just about anything, but the raw material will definitely reflect in the finished product. They could use scraps or chips like plywood and it would have the same properties as superwood, but it wouldn't look as nice. And if your goal is to have an attractive interior or exterior product, then you need to use something that is of a higher quality. He also said that in the future, they, as they expand, they could use whatever would make sense for the region that they're in. For example, in most places in the US, they'd likely use softwoods like pine, spruce, and fir. But if they're in Asia, they could use bamboo. On this front, he said that part of their goal is to be a mission-driven company and work towards using our natural resources more efficiently. They would wanna use existing supply chains for both cost and efficiency, but they could also take less valuable woods that would be destined for pulp or for landfills and use them as well. They could use wood reclaimed from forest fires or wood from diseased trees or trees killed by pine beetles. All of these kinds of timber are worth less to traditional lumber companies because of the quality, but Inventwood could use them all and there's no difference. That's really exciting as it could lead to uh, more efficient uses of our natural resources and have all sorts of positive impacts to the environment. The next question was about the possible uses for Superwood. Now, I had a ton of suggestions on my last video, everything from buildings, of course, uh, to musical instruments, to sports equipment, to furniture. I even had someone suggest knives, and Alex said that they actually made a knife. Uh, it required a bit more work to make and some special treatment, but he said that when they were done with it, it cut as good as a regular knife. But that actually brings me to one of the key points of this product. And you can build basically anything with it, but it isn't really practical for every application. While some things are fun to make in a laboratory just to have fun and see what you can do with it, you also have to consider whether this is the best material for any particular application. Things like knives, probably not. The best uses for this product are the, the uses that utilize its unique properties, which include things like its strength, its looks, or its fire resistance. One of the things that Alex and I talked about were the recent fires in California. As they rebuild there in California, they're gonna to wanna to rebuild with fire resistant materials, but people don't wanna live in steel boxes. Superwood could provide pleasing aesthetics as well as being fire resistant. One of the biggest spreaders of the fires in California were, were decks and fences that were built out of wood. They caught fire really quickly and really helped the spread in addition to the winds and other factors. A super wood deck or a super wood fence could provide much needed protection in a fire like that and slow the spread while providing the beauty and functionality that you would need from something like that. Now, one of the last things that we discussed was the price. Now, he did not offer any actual figures, and I'm sure that they're still figuring out exactly how to price everything as they work towards full production, but he did mention a few things that are interesting to me. First of all, in some of their marketing materials, they mentioned that this product can be produced cheaper than steel. And while that is true, it's gonna take them some time to work up to that. Um, also, you can't really compare it to regular lumber, like a regular two by four. The use case is entirely different. And uh, while you could use it for regular woodworking, it really only makes sense in applications that utilize its unique features. For example, we talked about fences. Now, a regular fence picket is around $3 or so. To get a fence picket of the same size, it would cost five times as much just for the wood, let alone the cost for the entire process to make it. So it isn't going to be cheap, but again, it can be very valuable and cost effective in certain applications. One of the other things that Alex mentioned is that they are really focused on a quality model, similar to Tesla and how they first got started. Tesla first came out with a Roadster because they wanted to show that EVs could be really high performance and beautiful. Inventwood as a company is focused now on producing a quality product as they demonstrate its usefulness and beauty. And then over time, as it gains more widespread acceptance with builders and others, it will become more accessible in terms of price 
for just about everyone, but that's gonna take time. It's not gonna happen overnight. Now, one thing that I'm really excited about is that Alex said that he would send me a sample of Superwood. I can't wait to get my hands on it and see what it looks like in person. Be sure to subscribe to my channel because I am definitely gonna be making a video to show it to you and perhaps even do a few experiments and tests of my own to see how it performs. So Superwood really is an amazing material. It has a ton of potential to replace a dirty, non-renewable material like steel with a renewable material in many applications. Now there's one last thing that Alex said that really stuck with me. Now as I mentioned, he said that they want to be a mission-driven company. He said that they want to herald in a new age of wood. They want to bring this amazing new material to the world that can store carbon and they want to help create a more livable environment for people, a safer environment for people with uh, what he called biophilic building. We as humans do better in a natural environment. We like the look of wood and if we can use it in a way that is not only pleasing to our senses, but also serves practical and structural purposes, then that's a win-win for everyone. But I wanna know what you think. What other uses could you see for Superwood? What other questions do you have for the company? What kind of experiments do you want me to do when I get my hands on my sample of Superwood? Leave me a comment and let me know. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos and I'll see you in the next one.